JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 10th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It underperformed the most versus NOC, SEC and the Kiwi in that order, while it decked out some gains only against the Japanese yen. Now, the weakening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen suggests that risk appetite returned into the markets yesterday. Indeed, uh, shifting, our t shifting our attention to the equity world, we see that major EU and US indices were a sea of green, with Nasdaq being the main gainer as tech-related stocks were bought again. Tesla jumped 7.7%, while Apple, Microsoft and Amazon rose by at least 4%. Reports uh, that AstraZeneca may resume its coronavirus vaccine trials next week may have also helped. The company had to pause trials after side effects in a, part in a participant. The upbeat morale, although softer, rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Both Japan's Nikkei 225 and, Chi and China's Shanghai Composite gained 0.82 and 0.36% respectively. Although we saw decent chances for the latest correction uh, to continue for a while more, yesterday's rebound adds more credits to our view that another crash uh, in equities seemed unlikely. Remember, we noted that with major central banks and governments willing to do whatever it takes to support the global economy, we saw decent chances for equities to resume their uptrends in the, in the not too distant future. Now, apart from developments surrounding the broader market sentiment, we also had a Bank of Canada interest rate decision yesterday. As was uh, expected, the bank kept uh, interest rates unchanged at 0.25%, repeating that they will stay there until the 2% inflation target is, is sustainably achieved. They also reiterated the view that they will continue with their QE program until the economic recovery is well underway and that they stand ready to adjust their programs if market conditions change. They said that both the global and Canadian economies are evolving broadly in line with uh, the scenario outlined in July, but added that the bounce back in activity in the third quarter looks to be faster than anticipated in July. Although there were no major changes compared to the prior gathering, the last part may have helped the Canadian dollar uh, to, finish, to finish its uh, day higher against its uh, US counterpart. The rebound in oil prices may have also helped. Moving ahead, we expect the currency to be driven mainly by oil prices as well as by any headlines surrounding the broader market sentiment. If oil reverse, uh, reverses uh, back south on uh, on demand concerns, then the loonie may turn back south as well, especially if this happens in the midst of another sell of inequities. The opposite may be true if investors around the globe continue to increase their risk exposures. As for today, the main event on the agenda is the ECB monetary policy decision. The last time they met, ECB officials refrained from altering their monetary policy but stayed ready to adjust all their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards its uh, aim in a sustained manner. At the press conference following the decision, President Lagarde urged EU governments to take action in battling the coronavirus pandemic, with EU leaders eventually agreeing on a 750 billion euro, uh, euro rescue fund. The euro entered a rally mode against its US counterpart, perhaps on hopes that with a fiscal aid, the eurozone was likely to recover faster. What may have also helped the euro dollar to much higher was the Fed's decision to adjust its inflation approach, 
noting that they will now aim at 2% average inflation, which means extra loose uh, policy for longer. Having said that, though, uh, after hitting 120, euro dollar came under uh, some selling interest as inflation in the euro area turned negative in August for the first time since 2018. On top of that, ECB chief economist Philip Lane said that the euro dollar exchange rate does matter for monetary policy comments, which combined with the negative inflation rate may have raised speculation for additional easing by the ECB. That said, yesterday a Bloomberg report hit the wires, noting that ECB officials are growing more confident on the euro area economic outlook, which suggests that they are unlikely to introduce, any, any, to introduce uh, new stimulative measures at this gathering. The euro gained following the report. Thus, all the attention may fall on any comments over the euro's latest appreciation and how this could affect the outlook for inflation. If uh, they appear as confident as yesterday's report suggested and show little concern over the euro's strength, euro bulls may decide to stay in the driver's seat for a while more. Now, in case uh, they ring alarm bells over the euro's rally and also appear concerned with regards to the economic outlook, in contrast uh, to yesterday's report, the common currency may come under new selling interest. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the European, uh, during the European morning, morning, we already got Norway's CPIs for August. The headline rate rose to 1.7% year-over-year from 1.3% as expected, while the core one inched up to 3.7% year-over-year from 3.5% instead of staying unchanged as the forecast suggested. This, combined with the fact that GDP for mainland Norway contracted at a pace very close to the bank's own estimate, may allow Norge's bank officials to continue sitting comfortably on the sidelines. We get inflation data for August from Sweden as well. Both the CPI and CPIF rates are forecast to have increased to 0.9 and 0.8% year-over-year from 0.5%. That said, as it is always the case, we will pay more attention to the core CPIF rate, which excludes the volatile items of energy. That rate rose to 1.5% year-over-year in July from 1.3%. At its latest gathering, the Riksbank decided to extend its framework for its asset purchases from 300 billion SEC to 500 billion SEC up to the end of June 2021 while it announced that in, uh, in September it will start purchasing corporate bonds. The board also decided to cut interest rates and extend maturities on lending to banks, despite keeping the repo rate unchanged at 0%. We believe that after acting at its uh, last gathering, even if inflation misses somewhat, uh, somewhat its uh, forecasts, the, the RICS bank is unlikely to proceed with any changes at uh, its upcoming gathering. Now, later in the day, from the US, we get the initial jobless claims for last week. Expectations are for a small decline to 846,000 from 881,000 the, the week before. The Energy Information Administration weekly report on crude oil inventories is also coming out, and the forecast points to a 1.335 million barrels uh, slide after a 9.362 million uh, tumble in the week before. As for the speakers, apart from ECB's uh, chief uh, Christine Lagarde, we also have Bank of Canada Governor Tiff uh, Macklin. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.